Configuring Pressure Network Styles Here we will learn how to navigate and configure your display styles for pressure pipes, fittings, and appurtenances. Okay, so we'll continue with the same drawing we had in our previous demonstration. As you can see, we already have our existing conditions model referenced into our current working drawing. We also have defined the location to where we'll be referencing our pressure network catalog from. In this case, we're just going to use the standard push-on Civil 3D out-of-the-box pressure network catalog. Additionally, we have already previously set up a custom pressure network parts list in our previous demonstration. Essentially, we're all set up at this point to start designing and laying out our pressure network. Please note that configuring your pressure network styles can be done later on after you start laying out your design if you'd prefer. But I personally like to knock out as much as I can in the setup so all I have to focus on down the road is the design itself. That being said, let's go to our home ribbon and select the tool space icon. This will bring up a box that will allow us to define, modify, and update various settings within our drawing. In this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and set up or configure our pressure network view styles. To do so, we'll click on the settings tab in the tool space, scroll down to the pressure pipe. Let's click on the plus sign next to the pressure pipe to expand that option, then click on the plus sign next to pressure pipe styles. As you can see, we have a few predefined styles that are available to us, and those are the centerline water, the crossing pipe water, double line water, and standard styles. If you plan on setting up a template file, I would suggest creating a new view style for your pressure pipe that can be incorporated into your standard template at a later date. To create a new pressure pipe view style, we'll simply right click on pressure pipe styles and select new. Once the dialog box pops up, we'll go ahead and give it a logical name in the information tab. In this case, I'm just going to call it demonstration. Next, we'll move on to the plan tab. As you can see, we have a multitude of options to display our pressure pipes. The first category is pipe wall sizes. Here you could have the pressure pipes display according to the dimensions actually defined within each part in the catalog, or you can show all pressure pipes at a consistent or user-defined inner and outer di diameter dimension. In my experience, we typically show our pressure pipes as single line up to 12 inches and then as double line for pressure pipes with a diameter of 12 inches or larger. So we'll just keep the default for now to use the part dimensions for the pipe wall sizes. Below this option, we have a pipe hatch option section. In this section, we can add a preset hatch to be applied to hatch the entire pipe up to the inner walls, to the outer walls, or you can opt to hatch just the walls only. You're more than likely going to want to check this box below, the hatch options, to make sure your hatch is aligned according to the pressure pipe layout or orientation. If this box is not checked, the hatch will default to your view orientation while laying out your pressure network. To the right, we have the pipe end line size category. Again, you could have a draw in plan view each pipe end to either the inner walls, the outer walls, or a user-defined dimension. Let's just keep the draw to outer walls option selected for now. Moving on to the profile tab. You can see we have a lot of the same view options that were available to us in the plan tab with the exception of crossing pipe hatch options. In most cases, we'll want to show existing utility crossings in our profile which is the reason for this additional option being available. Unlike the other options, the crossing pipe option available will show your pipes as an ellipse exactly where it crosses, as opposed to the showing the entire length of pipe. This goes a long way in quickly identifying potential utility conflicts. Moving on to your display tab, where we can control all available options within each of our views. If we pull down the view direction here, you can see we have plan view, profile, section, and model views available to control the display of. Let's start off with the plan view since we're already there. 
you can turn on or off each component type using the light bulb icon. We can change the layer, color, line type, line type scale, line weight, and plot style for each. You can change these individually, or you can select all, and then click on any of your options. In this case, I'll click on layer and change the layer of all components. Let's go ahead and select our C domestic water main pipe layer and apply that to our components. Down towards the bottom of the dialog box, you'll see the component hatch display mentioned earlier. When you click the pattern, another dialog box will appear where you can identify the hatch you want to apply to your view style. Let's go ahead and use our AutoCAD ANSI 131 predefined hatch pattern. We'll keep the angle at 45 degrees and scale as 1 for now. Let's go ahead and change our view direction to model. As you can see, we only have one option here of showing the pipe as a whole solid part. Let's go ahead and select the pipe solid component and change the layer to C domestic water main pipe, same as we did in the plan. Let's go ahead and change our view direction and profile. You can see that we have a multitude of options available, similar to what was available in the plan view direction, with the exception of the additional crossing pipe wall and hatch display options. We'll go ahead and select all the components again and change the layer to C domestic water main pipe. Then going to our last view direction of section, we have just the pipe hatch and walls available to us. Let's go ahead and change the layer of these components as well to C domestic water main pipe. Finally, when we go into our summary tab, we can view all the detailed information of our pressure pipe style. As you can see, we have a few more options for our display that weren't available in the other tabs. That being said, regardless of the type of style you're setting up, whether it be for pressure networks, surfaces, points, etc., you should always double check this summary tab for any additional settings or display options that may have been overlooked previously. I can't tell you how many times I've tried looking for a view setting that ended up being buried here within the summary tab. As an example, you can see here that there are additional options for displaying your pipes at a percentage of the defined dimensions. This option wasn't available to us previously in the other tabs. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now that we have our pressure pipe style configured, we can move on to setting up our view style for fittings. Let's go back to our tool space with the settings tab selected and scroll down to our fittings category. Let's expand the fitting styles. I'll right click on fitting style and select new. Let's go ahead and name our fitting style. I'll call it demonstration to keep things consistent. Moving on to the plan tab. Here we can define to show our fittings as just a center line, the catalog defined block, or as a user defined block. If you select the user defined block option, you can either select blocks currently in your drawing or you can browse here by selecting this icon to search for a predefined block you may have in your company library. Once you have your user defined block identified, you can apply a typical scale you'd like to apply as well. For now, I'm going to just go ahead and keep the catalog defined block display option selected as this allows me to better visualize my design as I'm laying it out in Civil 3D. Moving on to the next tab section, we have the option of showing as a crossing section or as a marker. In your marker selection, you can select an existing one or configure a new marker style here. I recommend taking a look at Pluralsight's training demonstration on configuring marker styles if you decided to go this route. But for simplicity and logical purposes, we'll just go ahead and select the display section option. Going to our display tab, you can see we have the same view direction options as we had with the pressure pipe styles, but in this case, we only have the ability to show or not show the fitting component itself in each of the views, with an additional option of showing the fitting hatch in section view if we'd like. 
Moving on to the summary tab, we could see more details about our new fitting style. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now that we have our fitting style configured, we can move on to setting up our view style for appurtenances. So again, let's go back to our tool space with the settings tab selected and expand our appurtenance category and then appurtenance style. I'll right click on appurtenance styles and select new. Let's go ahead and name our appurtenance style demonstration just to keep things consistent. Moving on to the plan tab, here you can define to show your fittings as just the center line, the catalog defined block, or as a user defined block, similar to the fitting styles. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and keep the catalog defined block display option selected, as this allows me to better visualize my design as I'm laying it out in Civil 3D. Moving on to the next tab of section, we have the same options of showing as a crossing section or as just a marker. Going on to our display tab, you can see that we have the same view direction options as we had with all our other style options. Moving on to the summary tab, we can see we have more details about our new appurtenance style. Let's go ahead and just click OK. So at this point, you're all set up to display your pressure network design, how you intend to show them in your plan, profile, and section views within your drawing set.